Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to a, another homebrew video here on CraigTube. Long overdue, this one. And this is about a beer called <clears throat> the Sierra Nevada Torpedo. This beer has received some notoriety uh, in the past year or two on, uh, in the circles where I broadcast on vonlive.tv um, from one of our fellow broadcasters and chatters as well. And this person has made famous the saying, the torpedo speaks to me. <laughs> so it's an awesome beer. And today I'd like to speak to you about how you can make this hoppy beer. It's very hoppy. It's a, it's a uh, torpedo extra IPA. Okay, let's first of all, give it a whirl. This has been sitting in my fridge and I want to thank Brian, an old friend of mine from way back for getting these for me from the States and bringing them over so that I can drink one while I'm, you gotta, don't forget that. Uh, drink one while I, while you're brewing one. That's what you gotta do, okay? If you can't get torpedoes, um, if you live in Canada, you might find a bone shaker. They, they taste very, 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 very similar. Um, but if you can get torpedoes, get one. These are awesome beers. They are very hoppy and um, they're not filtered, as you can see. Oh boy. Um, if, you, if you've never tried a hoppy beer, um, you think you should try one of these. There's lots of great IPAs out there, but this Torpedo is awesome. Let's give this a whirl. Cheers. <laughs> oh boy yes that's a really nice beer i love this beer it's probably it's got to be one of my favorites and so i want to show you how you can brew this beer um so as you can see we've got some ingredients here this beer kit was sent to me by beer me too or his first name is robert hey robert how you doing and uh, as you can see this beer has got a considerable amount of hops I'm gonna put the you know the recipe on the screen so you can see exactly what we're doing. We've got some uh, some carafoam and some crystal in there, and we've got some uh, the hops are uh, citra, crystal, and magnum added at different times and different amounts. And so as you can see, I've got them all measured out. I knew there was a reason why I kept those little cupcake things. I don't cook cupcakes, but I knew there was a reason why I was keeping them. There you go. So, um, put this down over there for just a little while. And so I'm going to follow the instructions, which are basically, uh, you've got the grains here. I'm going to put them in a bag. We're going to steep these for 20 minutes at 170, I believe, or is it 160? I'll have to read the instructions, which obviously came with the kit. And I'll put the uh, information at the bottom of the screen. So we're going to put about two and a half gallons of water in the brew kettle. And then we're going to steep these grains for 20 minutes. And then we will bring that to a boil and start adding our stuff to make our Sierra Nevada Torpedo. They speak to me. <laughs> Cheers. Let's get started. Okay, so of course there's two ways of doing this. One, you can do it the all grain method, which is using grains and, and mashing them yourself to make the, the wort, or you can get the malt extract and do it that way. It's a little bit easier and takes less time. Um, and of course we've got eight pounds of ugh, liquid malt extract here. So in this case, the work has been done for me and that's what Robert kind of figured he would, he kind of figured I would prefer that, which I kind of do. Um, I, don't, I don't have any problem at all with partial extract brewing. So, um, of course, we do have some fresh uh, grains to go in. And it, uh, it's just a Sierra Nevada Torpedo IPA. Um, but, of course, the ingredients are on the screen at the beginning of the video, so you can see exactly what's in these. And... My temperature is exactly 160 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm going to open these grains and put them in a Ziploc because they've been sitting around for a little while. 
took me a little while to get around to doing this, unfortunately. Whoops. Oh, they're already in a bag. Look at that. We don't need a grain bag. Don't need this. <laughs> They've already come pre, pre-bagged. So I've turned off my burner. It's at exactly 160 Fahrenheit, which is the maximum they <clears throat> wanted me to have it at. And I'm going to place the... Mmm. Oh yeah, babe. Yes. Place, place, place the grains into the hot water. And we'll grab our spoon and we'll just sort of tamp that down a little bit. Tamp? Is it not tamping? That's a that's a, a pipe smoking term. Okay. A little bit dark here. We'll get our other camera out. And give you a little a little shot of that. Not a lot of light in here. Let's see what we can do for that. That's better. So yeah, we just got it in there. And we're gonna let that steep for, it says 20 minutes. Okay, so I'll put the lid on. Right, and we'll let that steep for 20 minutes. We'll be back at you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> that's a good beer. Okay, it's been just over 20 minutes. And uh, let's get these out of here. Um, there's not much to see here, really, guys. It's just uh, I'm just sort of poking around a little bit to get try to get as much of the you know the flavor out of them as possible. It smells good. It smells very good. So then, what we do? We pull them out, and as you always hear people say, don't squeeze the Charmin. I mean, no, don't squeeze the bag. So I just grab onto my little shelf up here, and I just hold it up there and let it drain off all by itself. And while it's draining off, we can turn the heat back on, because now it's time to bring this up to a boil. Once it's up to a boil, we're gonna add the liquid malt extract. Now I'm going to heat these up in a in a sink of hot water to make them easier to pour. And normally what I do is I only add three quarters of it because this is a partial boil. Um, so it's not a full, you know, it's five, six gallon boil. It's only two and a half gallons, but I'm going to follow the instructions exactly the way they say to do it. And I'm going to add all of it now. What I just described was called late extract additions. Um, sometimes you save a little bit until the end of the boil, just to give the hops more opportunity to infuse themselves into the wort. But I'm doing it the way they say to do it. So I'm going to add all of it. So once this comes to a boil, I add those, and then it would boil for an hour. And that's when we start adding all of our different hop additions, which gives this thing the dimensions that it has. And there will also be a dry hopping stage as well, which I will not film during this episode, but we can certainly do a follow-up um, to that, and we'll do a tasting video as well to see how it tastes. And I will probably save, because I have two of these torpedoes. This is one of them. The other one I will save in the fridge, and when this beer is done in about two weeks, we'll do a side-by-side. -side. How's that sound? Okay, that looks like it's pretty drained. So let's get this out. I'm gonna finish this right now. Oh. oh man, that's a good beer. That is a good one. 7.2% alcohol, that beer is. And then we can just throw that out. Or, you know, yeah, just throw it out. You can untie it, put it in your compost, whatever you decide to do. Eat it to the rat. I have a pet rat upstairs. Maybe she'll eat it. So we got this coming up to the boil and I like to stick a thermometer on it so that I can see how close it is to the boil. And once it's there, we'll start adding our extracts and our hops. Well, I've got my 
concoction here to a boil. And this little analog thermometer here, this is actually pretty accurate because it says exactly 212 Fahrenheit. Not bad. So we'll pull that out. That's just so I can see how close it is to boiling. And now we have to turn off the burner and get our liquid malt extracts. I already took the tape, all the tape off of these things. You didn't want to see me swearing my way through that. So we got the tape off and we'll just go ahead. Oh boy. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Oh yeah. Unhopped liquid malt extract. Make sure you have the heat off. If you're doing this for the first time or you're new at this, you've got to make sure you turn off the burner. Otherwise, because this stuff goes, you know, it goes right to the bottom of the thing. And it will burn. It's very, very sweet. Um, mm, make a good barbecue sauce. It's good stuff. Very sweet, but that's why it ferments. Because they got all the nice sugars and colors and flavors out of the grains when they did the mash for us. And because I preheated the containers, um, it's coming out nice and easily. Mind you, I will deposit some of the wort back into the containers or some hot water anyway to get all of it out so we got all of the goodness out of these jars of liquid malt extract and, and again this stuff is just the product of you know the taking the the base malts which is a, a malted barley it's called two row mostly um, barley and they you you can you can do it yourself I've done it myself a few times. You know, you, you soak it in hot water and it, there's, a, there's an enzyme inside of the grain that converts into sugar. It's a long ex explanation. I won't go into the whole mechanics of it, but basically what you're doing is you're converted, converting starches into sugars when you heat it this way. It's the way the grain works. Um, it's made that way by nature. And so when you do that, the sugars then are there to ferment because when you add the yeast, the yeast eats the sugars and creates alcohol. You guys know all this, but you know, there's new people that watch these videos. So I want to make sure that they all get the uh, sort of the inside story. But this malt extract is made from that procedure. So if you don't want to do that yourself, you can buy the already made, the ready made stuff. And it's not, it's not like Betty Crocker or something like that. It's good stuff. You can make you can make really really good beer with extract, but some people just want to do the all grain part, and that's fine. Whatever you know, whatever to each to each his own. Whatever is uh, best for you. That's the thing. So um, what I will do is I will. I don't want to. I don't have a. I need a spoon or a container. Yes, I have a container over here, which I will take and get some of the, I'll actually do it with a bigger one so that we can use it to, see there's lots of goodness left inside of there. It's like the peanut butter jar, you know? So we wanna get some of the, and we're not worried about sanitizing at this point because it's gonna boil. So as long as everything's clean, then that's all that really matters. So we get that and it's very hot. So you wanna be very careful uh, with this. Actually, it's getting too hot for me to even handle. Just put the lid on that just loosely and just you know again you have to be very careful just give it a quick you know a sort of a, an easy jostle to get all of the stuff out of there like that okay so and it's it's getting very hot so be very careful with it dump that back in and there's still some left so um, i'm going to keep doing that and i'm going to do it with this one as well until we get all of it out of there, because there's no need to waste this stuff. Okay, so I'll be right back. All 
All right, there you go. See, that's what we like to see. Okay, so we'll chuck those out or keep them if you want. And then we turn it back on. Make sure it's all stirred in well. So it doesn't stick to the bottom. And let's grab our little, uh, whoops, oh great, the spoon fell in. Okay, so I fished that out of there. I guess I, I should probably get a longer spoon maybe after 30 some years of brewing beer. Okay, so um, yes, once we bring this to the boil, um, then we will start adding the hops. So basically, this is very simple. You, you soak some grains for a little while, get the flavor out of those, just like making tea. You bring that to a boil, you add your liquid malt extract. It's gonna obviously come off the boil for a little while. It's gonna get lower in temperature. So you bring that back up to the boil. And then once that's boiling, you start adding your hops. And the instructions tell you when to add each type of hop. So it's very, very easy for those of you who haven't done it yet. A lot of you have, so there's, I'm just repeating myself. But you know, again, there's new people that watch these um, videos and they haven't brewed yet so we got to make sure everyone gets all the information they need. I chose a, a US05 yeast. Um, they suggested different ones and this is the one I have so it's the one I'm going to use and I'll be happy to just sprinkle that on the top of the wort once it's once it's cooled and ready to go. Um, so this is going to take a little while to get up to the boil. A lot of this involves just waiting waiting for it to boil, waiting for it to heat up, waiting for it to cool down, waiting, you know, a lot of it's, you know, got to do with that. So, um, you know, you find other things to do, but you can't keep your eyes off of this for very long because when it starts to boil, it's gonna, it, it'll foam up and it'll go all over the place. So you really have to keep, you know, keep an eye on it. So don't just walk away. It's not like a, a kettle of water. It's, you know, it's, it's wort, so it's gonna be very, uh, messy if it gets boiled over. So we'll come back when this is boiling and we'll start adding our hops. So as you can see, this 1800 watt induction burner barely uh, keeps this at a boil. Um, this is about three gallons of water here and it's just barely doing it. So I'm deciding that I'm not going to use um, a hop bag because all it does is it floats on top so I was gonna put the hops in here and you know just sort of leave it you know hanging out the side and just add them all it does is float on top I don't believe the hops get utilized properly so I'm just gonna dump them in so our first hop addition is I think it's three quarters of an ounce of magnum hops are going in right now there you go and we start a timer for exactly 45 minutes. So this just boils for 45 minutes. Again, we're waiting. Uh, now you've, you know, sort of gotten past the hot break and there's no more boil, boil overs or anything like that. So now you can just let it um, boil away and you can probably go and do some other things. The slower you bring it up to the boil, the less of a hot break you're gonna have. What's a hot break? Uh, it's when the thing boils over, basically. So you have to control that. But this, this is the highest wattage burner I can get here without blowing the place up. 1800 watts. So it's barely doing this, but it's enough. And I didn't get a hot break because it was slowly coming to the boil. The hot break kind of dissipated itself as it came up. So 45 minutes from now, I'll probably be drunk. But anyways, I will come back and we'll add the other hop additions. Thank you. See ya. All right, already. Okay. 45 minutes has passed. And so now it's, it's barely boiling. I, you know, I, without a, a propane burner, this is the best I can do. Now we have to add um, our 15 minute boil hops. In other words, this, these were going in 15 minutes before the end of the boil. And these are our one ounce crystal and one ounce magnum hops. 
in they go. Now these get to boil for 15 minutes. And uh, just kind of give those a little poke. And then, I mean, I don't know, this is pretty boring and easy stuff. So now that boils for 15 minutes. And when that's done boiling for 15 minutes, we turn it off and we add what are called our flame out hops. And um, those are the three hops that we have here, the Citra, Crystal and Magnum. So it's three hops total, but all added at different times. Okay, so 15 minutes. Let's set the alarm for 15 minutes. Alrighty, with my trusty Android. Uh oh, I just created a, a divide in the chat room. Android versus Apple. No, no, just kidding. I had an iPhone once and I liked it, but I got an Android now. So 15 minutes. And what, the other thing we have to do is cool the wart at the end of this. So I have a trusty uh, wart chiller. And it's been a while since I've unraveled this thing. So we're going to have to get it the heck out of here. And well, it's been sitting for a while, so we'll give it a rinse. And we'll put it in there, and this is going to sanitize it. Of course, it's going to bring temperature down a little bit too. And sanitizing it, and then hook it up to the tap so that we can chill the wart when we're ready to do so. Anyway, there we go. So we're all set to go. Um, let this thing come back to a boil. Ouch, it's hot. And uh, we will add the final hop additions at flame out. Okay. So this is dead easy. I mean, it's, you know, it's just a lot of standing around waiting. I was watching some videos on YouTube while I was waiting for this to boil and, you know, it's pretty easy stuff. So, you know, we got a little things, a few th things to do around the house. Um, some catching up to do on your work, on your computer, emails and whatnot. It's a good time to brew a malt. Uh, it's a good time to brew a partial extract beer because it's so easy and there's hardly any well, even all grain. I mean, either way, it's so easy. It's, there's hardly any work involved. It's just a lot of waiting around is really what it is. So, there you go. In the meantime, I'm drinking a home brew. I think this is a Cooper's Australian Pale Ale. I think this is what this is. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Barely boiling. Yes, but it's okay. We got it. It's working. So there you go. Um, if anyone has any uh, comments or uh, suggestions or, you know, worries about the boil not being as rolling as it normally should be, let me know down in the comments section. What do you think this will do to the board? Maybe it won't boil, boil off the DMS as much as it should. Um, but I have to tell you, I've done this before and it's never been a problem. So there's our 15 minute mark. Now it's time for what's called flame out. Flame out is when you turn off the heat, but I won't do that until I add the last three hop additions, which are all three of the hops. And I'll put the amounts again on the screen. Keep these little cups, they're handy there, right? Just going to add them right into that. And then during the time it takes to cool the wart down, these hops will let off some of their poof, aromas and give this beer a nice effervescent feel and taste and smell. So now we turn off the heat. And the nice thing about these induction burners and, of course, the propane burners as well, is as soon as you turn the heat off, <clears throat> it's off. So now we do the wort chiller. 
which I haven't done in a while on video, but it's the same old, same old. You turn the height, turn the tap on as far as it'll go. And this, this wart chiller, I don't remember the name of it. This one is specially designed for small batches, you know, small boils of beer like this. Now, I can grab the cold side. The hot side is hot. But the cold side, what you want to do, and I've said this before, is to make sure you move the thing around. Don't just, you know, expect it to sit there. Whoops. And don't let the exhaust go onto the floor either. That can create a bit of a mess like it just did. Okay, so hang on to that. And just, you want to move them around because otherwise, you know, it's it takes too long. If you move it around like this, it is much quicker at chilling the wart, even if you just, you know, do that with it. You know, some people just leave it sit like that and go, oh, it took 20 minutes to do the cool that wart down. Well, no wonder it's cooling the same portion of the wart down all the time. Got to move it around and get it all figured out. Um, the hotter the wart is, the faster it will cool. So when you're moving it around, you're getting all the hot spots and they're cooling faster. That's the way it works. This should probably take about oh, two, three, four minutes to get this down to a decent temperature. Wow, that's unbelievable. That wart chiller, that wart chiller took three minutes, if that, to get it down to a temperature where it's probably about 80 degrees Celsius, but that's fine because I'm going to be adding cold water to it. So that's awesome. I'm it's so simple. Everything is so simple when it comes to brewing beer. It can be simple or it can be complicated depending on what you want it to be. So we'll get that out of there. And now I have a fermenter which needs to be sanitized. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this. I have um, purchased a water distiller. Um, I don't think it's extremely important for you to use distilled water with star sand, but I'll tell you, that's about three weeks old and it's just starting to get cloudy. And that's only because it's being, being mixed with rinse water. Um, so it, it's... I bought a distiller for different reasons, not to, you know, I'm not going to make spirits with it, but I need distilled water for other things too, like cleaning vinyl records and stuff like that. So um, it's great for making star sand if you can if you can afford one. You never know when you need some distilled water. I have my fermenter here, and um, I'm going to sanitize it with that star sand, and then we're going to pour that in and add cold water. We're good to go. Good to go. That's an original one. Now, because I didn't put the hops in a bag, you know, it's going to be a, it's not a very clear wort. I'm not concerned about that. It will settle out during the fermentation or after the fermentation. Um, I may have to do a secondary. Uh, we'll see. But uh, I'm not, I've never really been too concerned about that at all. We just leave the sludge in the bottom there. There you go. Right. Put that down there. Okay, and to that, and that's already room temperature. So we're going to have to add a mixture of cold and warm water to get this up to about, I'd say about 70 degrees Fahrenheit um, for maximum, you know, fermentation. It says between 64 and 72, so... I tend to, go on, tend to go on the high side, just the way I am. I've always been like that. Some people go on the low side. It just depends on what you prefer. Uh, you know, it's about 68 degrees down here in the basement, so it'll settle out. Okay, so now I'm going to get questions about oxygenating the wort. Okay, when you do all grain, you're boiling the entire, you know, the entire wort. So you're boiling off all the oxygen. And in that case, you do have to think about you know, adding oxygen back into the wort before you add your yeast because the yeast needs oxygen. But when you're doing a partial extract like this, only the portion that you boiled is going to have the oxygen removed from it. The water that you add to it to top it up 
is still going to have the oxygen in it. So it's not as important to oxygenate your wort when it's a partial extract or an extract beer. There's only one, two, one and a half gallons here. So there's less than half here, um, much less than half here is, has been boiled. So I'm just going to stir it very vigorously for a couple of minutes. And, you know, that will help. But when we add the top up water, there's going to be oxygen in that water. So that's the difference. And I've noticed that a lot on, you know, discussions and forums and things. You know, people worrying about you're making a Cooper's or something like that. You got to add oxygen. No, you don't. The water that you're adding to it to top it up has the oxygen in it. It's only when you're doing all grain beer, when you've boiled the entire complement of the wort, that you have to add it back because you don't, you're not adding any uh, extra water to that. So, and yes, the old green hose is back in session. It's sanitized, it's cleaned, it's done me well for 23 years. So there you have it. <laughs> I'm gonna fill this up to 20 liters. It should be 23, but I always do 20 because that way I can fit it in my keg and it makes things a little bit more intense. All right, I actually added a little more than 20 liters. I added 22 liters because I'm gonna be racking this to a secondary. I am gonna lose some of it. So um, I compensated for that. Got some USO5 yeast here. Yeah, I know I'm gonna get complaints. I'm just going to sprinkle it on the way it tells me to do. Follow the instructions exactly the way they were laid out. So we get that on there nice and even. And in about a week, we'll be siphoning this into a carboy and adding the, the dry yeast additions. There we go. US 05 in. And in a week, we'll be siphoning it to a carboy and adding these. I can't wait to taste this beer. A torpedo beer is a treat. Um, and these things make you feel great. The hops give you a nice euphoric feeling, nice relaxed feeling. And at 7.2% alcohol, you catch a bit of a buzz too. So thank you guys for watching. This is how you make a torpedo. And I will be back in a couple of weeks to show you what it tastes like and how we finished it off with the yeast, or sorry, the hops, the, you know, the, the dry hopping, and to conclude how it compares to an original store-bought torpedo. All right, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned, cheers, be safe, and we'll see you real soon. Take care.